Okay. Hello. Day 93. Hello. Hello. I'm pretty miserable. I put some makeup on for like this video so it wouldn't like look as miserable because there's a little more pressure not to like burst into tears. You didn't put it on for me? I did put it on for you too. Hey. Looking lovely. Yeah, they've got so many women to choose from here that are your type. No, I'm pretty miserable. Um, good news is, so I think one of my kids kept running out of clothes and I'm like, you have like, like I had a very specific like formula for packing for them. And now that we have a washing machine that it doesn't dry for me, but it washes so I can wash our clothes pretty quick. Yeah. It's like a little small one, but I mean, it works. So like they don't have to rewear stuff. So if it's dirty, you know, just put it in the dirty clothes. But she's like, I'm out of clothes. So I was like, let's wash everybody's clothes. So I washed everything. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, where's your clothes? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, well, let's just get all your stuff out. So they each have these, like, packing cube compression bags things that we use to come. And they have, like, panties, socks, and bras. And then they have regular clothes and PJs. These are the categories of their life. And each one has three bags. And now they're labeled. And the only person, and none of them were doing what they said that they were doing. But the one, there was one that was kind of doing it. She's the one, she had an entire bag of clothes that was just missing. Like she, so she's just been cycling through and just re-wearing clothes. And I'm like, why are your clothes always dirty? She's like, I don't know. And she's the oldest. So like so the middle. So how many did you find? Did you find? Well, I mean, we found a whole bag of mostly underwear, but like it had like two shirts and like two more pairs of shorts. So they all have. Like a birthday so birthday. those of you that are going to come and bring other kids or bring yourself. So the clothes part was the hardest part because everybody's like, well, you can always wash your clothes. Even if you hand wash them, you can always wash them. And I'm like, okay. So for me, I probably could have left two t-shirts at home that I brought, but not really. I mean, it's close, you know? Yeah. So um, like I brought this, I have this one nice shirt. I have two kind of nicer shirts, one dress. And in case we have to, you know, meet anyone of importance. And then I have like two baggy t-shirts, and like three regular t-shirts, maybe four. I think I threw in one more adoption t-shirt for myself. But I have two shirts that Jeremy could wear too if he had to. Like they're actually just the same extra large adoption t-shirt. But I'm like, all the clothes are clean and yet you don't have anything to wear today. So we found it. So then I made them all reorganized. But when you're packing for your kids, my recommendation is this, two bathing suits. And we did the long sleeve bathing suits because you don't have to deal with as much sunscreen. It's hot here, but two, two bathing suits. Um, cause number one, if something happens to one of the bathing suits, like one of my kids ripped her bathing suit top and I'd sewed it back together. But like, I mean, what if I don't know how to sew? What if you don't know how to sew? So two bathing suits for everybody. Um, two bathing suits for myself. Jeremy just brought one. That's been pretty fine for him. Um, four outfits, like four t-shirts and four shorts. And then one long sleeve so there's so the oldest has a long sleeve shirt and the youngest has a long sleeve shirt and the middle has three long sleeve shirts then one in the middle my middle child she is middle so basically both of her sisters could wear her clothes if they had to she got, got extra for her she's got a little few extra things like she's got extra underwear she's got she's just got extra stuff extra pair of socks and she helped me pack more than the others did and she was like mom i really want this and i was like you know that's fair so today I got really sad. First I got really happy. So I got all the kids stuff organized and they mail on their bags. And I was like looking at these like four, three or four little bags, compression bags of stuff that I packed for our new kids who are six and seven. Did not pack socks or shoes for them because I had no idea what size their foot was. And now I do know. And luckily it's just a slight smidge smaller than my seven-year-old. So we're going to have to go find them socks and shoes. But I had I had bought them new clothes from Amazon, and then I had thrown in some clothes that were like hand-me-downs from my other kids that'll work, like play shorts, play clothes. And but they were not 100% equal, and I did it like as we were. I mean, I did it because we first we were just coming to visit, and then I'm like, well, there's a chance we could get them. And now we've been here for 49 days, and we still think that now we don't think there's a chance that we'll get them. We think that we will get them. Somehow. But that's a whole nother thing. Somehow. A whole nother thing. So you so I organized their clothes. Go ahead. So you're talking about things that are hard. I, I kind of want to talk on about the grind, as I've been calling it. So okay, the, well, first, the, the grind? The grind of life. Can I talk about my clothes problem first? I thought you were done. No. 
So the middle child got out, got with me, and we took all we took all the new kids' stuff and like laid it out on the bed. And I'd organized it really well. And I thought I hadn't brought them two bathing suits. I thought I just brought them one, but I did bring them two long sleeve bathing suits. Apparently, I ordered that. So like past obsessive packer Rachel, future Rachel thanks you because it was hard to pack. But I got it all, and and we organized all their stuff. So they have like they have about half the amount of stuff that my other kids have because my other kids are having to live here for a long time. And now, especially that we have a washer, but I just, when I was packing for them, like when you're packing for your adoptive kids, like I just wanted enough that we could get through like four or five days if we had to. So they both have three, three pairs of PJs. I'm just trying to help the people that are going to pack for their adoptive kids. If you have a kid and you're matched with them, I can tell you their sizes right now. So like if, or I can go look, I can tell you their shoe sizes too. So if you're like watching this and you're, you're matched and you need to know that information, like let me know. And if I don't know it off the top of my head right this minute, I will go find out tomorrow when we go visit. Because it was so, it gave me so much anxiety to try to anticipate what they would need. Anyways, um, so six outfits total. And then my middle child helped me line them up. And she made some trades because she was like, you know, this one's favorite color is this and this one's favorite color is that. So let's move these. And I'm like, fair. And then she helped me divide up the play clothes that I had just thrown in. I was like six shorts they're like black and blue shorts they're hand-me-downs they're nothing special um and I did but bring them both pants and their pjs are long sleeve pants and long sleeve shirts because they they're actually there when they would get them if we get them when we get them they're gonna be sleeping in air conditioning and they've never done that before and be cold. So there's no air conditioning at the home because there's no reliable power at the home um so so yeah, so I got that all organized and I felt so good about it. And my middle child was like, mommy did a good job with this. I understand why it took so long. Yes, this is good. Job. And then she like left and went to play. And then I stood in the walk-in closet they were all sharing and like bursting into tears. And then I texted my friends and was like, I'm bursting into tears. I'm losing my mind. And they're like, texting me encouraging things, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> You're almost done. And so, <clears throat> but that was hard for me because I've had a hesitancy to unpack any of that stuff. Because what if I just have to repack it and bring it next time? And if we're bringing it the next time, they're not gonna, it's not going to fit them. So do I just give it to the orphanage and like it just gets, and that would be fine too. But it was just like this, this challenge that I did at home that's still kind of haunting me here. So I did bring them both um, two of the blankets and they're different. And I'm still struggling with which one to give them. And one of them, uh, so my, <laughs> my middle child has said, mom you need to sleep with those blankets. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because you smell so good. And mm -hmm. I want them to, she wants her new sisters to feel safe. And I was like, oh, thank you, middle. Uh, we call her middle, that's her nickname. But like, I never thought of that. And she's like, it'll just make them feel safe to like, cause they already know what you smell like. And then when they're asleep and they wake up and they're in a new place, then they'll have the smell of mommy around them. So I was glad I brought them those blankets. I'll show you the blankets. You can talk about the grind if I get the blankets. Oh, thanks. That's really sweet. I don't want to follow that with this. Oh, well, it's okay. But what I've been thinking of is like what I've been calling it the grind. It's like almost every day it feels like one of us has a headache or one of us is having like a stomach issue. I think it's just like the air quality here. It just really like makes like sometimes the days just drag on because we're both all kind of bored. And thank goodness for Netflix, but it's like the and grind Ernest. the grind of like our health, like the headaches and not sleeping well, waking well, up diet sore. Too. And just things we're not used to eating all the time. It's like, it's man, it really gets on your nerves after a while. Like, especially almost when we're taking on day 50. It's like. Yeah, well, tomorrow's day 50. It's like, man, this, we need a break. We need some good news and some encouragement. Yeah. Day 50 that we've, tomorrow will be day 50 that we've been in Liberia. And to be clear, you know, there's a lot of waiting families that have not chosen to come and we came to visit at first, and then we we just keep hearing that like we're so close to being done. There's a, you know this investigation that isn't being completed, and all of that. Um, and we hear that every week. So like, yeah, it's hard for us to leave knowing that we hear that every week. And honestly, once you you know don't come if you well, I, I say that if you want to come and just visit and go back home just to see your kids, if you can afford a week visit, I would highly recommend that you do that. We talked to another family that did that and it went well um, and they did leave and come back. And so I highly, it's not too hard, especially if you come and tell them like, we cannot pick you up on this trip, but we're going to come visit you. And we can even, if you decide you want to come and just visit and you have to go back home, 
um, that's fine. We can tell your kids for you before you get here and make sure that they understand that this is just a visit just to make contact. It makes a difference. The kids that are waiting that are matched when they get to see like um, videos from home, like videos from their future families, like we get pictures of them, but they don't get pictures of us except for maybe one or two pictures, unless you mail pictures, they don't get pictures. So like, I think it's been really nice for me to be able to show some of the kids like their families, um, the ones that I know well, you know, that, but they, they, the best thing would be for you just to come and make contact. So I don't want to discourage you guys from that. That was our initial plan. But when we got here, the diplomatic situation with the adoptions, it's just, it needs an American presence here for starters. Spiritually, it needs a more positive presence and um, we're just so close. And our fundraising went really well before we came, so we did have a little extra to do that. So, yes. but the grind, the grind the is grind. killing me. The grind is killing me. Like tonight, we're having rice and like popcorn chicken. Yeah, it's like uh, I miss our oven. It's kind of like Groundhog Day. You know, you can't get the same food that you normally get mm -hmm. in the states. Well, I was thinking like if we had known we were going to be here for two months, we probably would have bought an oven like we did for the orphanage and just plugged it in. I think we can use theirs until we get our office kids. No, we're not going to take it from them. They were so excited. Can I borrow this? Um, the fundraiser's going really well. So I set the goal of $2,500, and we're down to needing just like 18 What did I tell you? It changed. I'm not, I'm not sure. Let me look at my calculator. Um, people have been donating so quickly, and people have been buying so quickly. Um, uh, hang on. I'll, you keep talking, I'll, I'll find Yeah, it. but some days it takes like a lot to get out of bed and get your ener energy going. So, especially on days when you're not going to go visit the kids in the orphanage. We're just kind of hanging around doing school. and. Yeah. We've already gotten $654, like noonday commissions on top of cash donations, $654. So, we only need um, $1,846 to hit my $2,500 goal. And that goal does include um, a deep freezer for them. Cool. Because there's no sense in buying a freezer if you don't have the electricity, right? So It'll just be storage if you do so that. So I want to get the solar first and then get the freezer after we know that the solar is working well. But the running water thing, I didn't realize. I think a lot of the parents didn't realize that if you don't have 24-7 reliable power, you don't have running water. So. Yeah. These are the blankets. These are the two of the blankets. Um, I don't know which kid I'm going to give which to. So. They both told me, one of them said that her favorite color is blue and white. So I think she's going to get this one. And it has whales on it. And if you have had a baby in the last, like, five years, and I live close to you or we're friends, you've gotten one of these tulip blankets. But these are, like, the size of a twin bed. So these did make the packing list. And the other one is this one. So the other one's favorite colors are purple and red. So I feel like she'll get this one. And then the older one will like the blue and white. Don't you think? Pretty. But it's hard to say. They'll probably just be like, oh, thanks. What do yeah. do with this? <laughs> they don't really have strong opinions on things yet. They do have strong opinions. I think deep down, the older one specifically has some pretty strong opinions. Yeah, but how she expresses it. She's a little it, feistier she gets, than I imagine. She kind of secludes in herself as she uh, gets yeah. upset. But. They're doing good, though. So, yeah, I was talking about our, our my, my last goodbye when I step over the car and wave at them, you know. Mm -hmm. Like she looks for it now. Like I'll pop my head up, and she's like looking for me. It's pretty yeah. cute. It's a nice yeah. ritual to end the day. They're just tired of waiting. We're tired of waiting. The new day show is going really well, so um, I'm gonna try to pop on there too. But these are the the glass ring bar, the pearlescent bracelet. I got the Verona and the belief necklace on today, and then the white tunic um, shirt. That I mean, I've worn this. Can be like a business. Like I could totally wear this for like a business meeting. Or like a bathing suit cover up, like it's that diverse, um, and it's new, but it's linen. So and it has it's done really well. Like it's a thicker linen, so it doesn't really wrinkle the same way that like regular linen does. But but yeah, we need some noonday fishing lures or something. That'd be cool to talk about. I know. Wish we could get them to make fishing lures. Do something shiny. That'd be good. Something shiny. I'm sure some of the <laughs> earrings could easily be fishing lures. And then, how excited are you about Rico? When you read that text to me, I laughed out loud. Literally. Like, Jeremy and I are really sad right now, but, like, there are things that cheer us up. So, like, my friend Paige, who, <laughs> God bless her, she's helped me do so many Noonday shows. And she's, like, so just as Noonday excited as I am, especially for a good cause. And so this Noonday show that we're doing is to help pay for the solar panels. Yeah. And we really haven't. We're still just kind of waiting for the group to build. We haven't really started doing, like, videos or anything crazy yet. Um, and we've already gotten some purchases, which is great. 
but she said that she had asked Rico, her husband, if he would do like put in the shopping links the way Jeremy does and kind of just be like in the background, just kind of present. And he's like, dude, no, I want to model. Can I model? Because <laughs> he's got his ears pierced. And Rico is like such a guy's guy. I was about to like, say, he's a, he's a burly dude. He's with a guy. Beard. He's got a beard. He's, he's a good really athlete. like, he's an I athlete. mean, he's a Rico's good like. And I just to see him like modeling your rings is pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm like. Paige, I'm so sad right now, but that just really cheered me up. Because Paige is like, hey, can I help you? Because she's got all my Noonday stuff, because she did a Noonday um, pop-up show for me for another charity in Cape Coral. And um, so she's got it all, and she knows how to get in my house, too. She knows how to key is, so she can go there if she wants to and borrow. I hope she's. I hope somebody's using our pool, honestly. But, um, but yeah, so Paige was like, I've got all your stuff still. So she's going to be live, but... And Paige is great on the videos live. Paige and I have done videos together, and I have never had so much fun. It's just, it's she, like, on a video like that, because she just, just feed off each other. It's funny. And Paige and I are both, like, we're in different mom phases, but, like, I'm not that far from the phase she's in. She's got, like, the preschool kids, mm -hmm. and I've got, like, the school-age kids, but, like, oh, it's so a lot. This is funny. So, like, being out of town, I had to pay our water bill and our electric bill. Yeah. And it was, like... Our electric bill was like a hundred and something, low hundreds, and uh -huh. not, and then our water bill was like in the forties. So That's I was like, crazy because we like, have a pool, so, so the pool's always going. And we teach swim lessons at our house. If you live in Cape Coral and you've got littles, we'll teach them to swim, and we do it for super cheap. Like our what we charge for swim lessons doesn't even like pay the what it takes to heat the pool, but we got to charge something or people don't show up. So like, yes, if you need a scholarship, let me know. But we, we have to charge something. So that's nice, actually. We don't have, like, giant But, yeah, our, our swimming there. lessons don't even outweigh the, uh, the, the what it costs to heat the Because the heater's off. That's why. It's the pool heater. Well, we're not taking showers, water heater. I think Paul may have turned the water heater off, too. So that's nice. Did he? He asked me about it, and I was like, yeah, I forgot to do that. Please do that. Yeah. So I don't know if he did or not. That but. sounds like a Paul thing to do. Yeah. Paul's probably watching the hurricane forecast, hoping you don't have to do any shutters. Most of them are up, so that's good. <laughs> Sorry. So another update too, our fill the box um, partner. So if you guys are considering fill the box for your adoption, I highly recommend it, especially if you're in the southeast. Fill the box is a textile recycling company um, that collects clothing, um, materials, shoes, socks, purses, hats, bedding, towels, sheets, curtains, tablecloths, even like Christmas decorations, anything that's like a cloth or a textile, they will take. You don't have to sort it; just bag it up. Um, so we have been running that, we've been doing that for over a year and it's it worked out really well and we've done it for our adoption and then we kind of got all of our adoption fundraising done, we thought, and so we started helping other adoptions and we did some nonprofits, <coughs> we did some stuff at our church and so it's gone really well, but, um, they did a route, they went to our normal places we go, like there's a few stores, consignment stores, a few churches, and, and then obviously people that just bring stuff to our house. So my dear friend Tia, who lives across the street, opened our garage for them to come pick stuff up that was there from our, because we, we did a load February. Right before we left. February 6th. Oh, and we sure. left on February 9th. That load was over 5,000 pounds. This load that they just did was 5,100 pounds. So that means that's another thousand dollars to help with our travel expenses. So that gives us, gives us another Which is, two weeks. It's here. really incredible. So that must mean like so. our partners that they went to pick up with, they must have really stocked, mm -hmm. stockpiled the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because so we usually go pick it up them. from them. So thank you to. Um, all the people that I think she reached out to Amanda at Donate for Kids, definitely Scott up in Punta Gorda at the thrift um, at the Methodist Church there in yeah, Punta Gorda. And kid to kid, kid to kid. Yep, I'm sure. Gosh, God bless Jay. Yeah. Um, so and there's a lot of other people, and then obviously Tia had to just open our garage so they could come, and then one of our other neighbors saw our garage open and was like nervous, so he closed <laughs> it. <laughs> but he was like, Thankfully, I mean, he's definitely like he's he's like <laughs> he's like our he's like our adoptive dad. Yeah. But he didn't know that the truck was coming. So next time we have a truck come, we'll make sure to let him know. Yeah. And he'll probably open. We should just get him to open and close it because Tia has to go to work or run around with get her kids everywhere. But yeah, um, Tia, one of Tia's daughters is, is taking care of our mail. She's in charge of our mail and our plants. So. Can you imagine our table at this point? <laughs> <laughs> so, all the mail is yeah. sitting there. <laughs> yeah, so we're kind of deliriously sad and happy at the same time because I guess as we talk through this video, the videos are kind of therapeutic for me because it's kind of a way to kind of even and out. I think my last video was kind of sad, but it was quick. But that was after we'd been gone all day and we had kids throwing, kid thrown up in the car. Because it's just a lot of start and stop traffic and they're paving the roads. Plus the air air oh, quality man. here is terrible. So um, so the Noonday Show is going really well. So the reason we're doing the Noonday Show is because we want those solar panels done and we're getting there. Um, because if we can upgrade their system, they would have running water and electricity 24-7. I cannot imagine caring for three kids without running water and electricity, personally. Like yeah. just keeping them clean. 
It's just, so, you know. Do you, so do you think like this trip is a good family bonding exercise for us? I think we're bonded. We haven't gotten any fights. Just one. It was little though. It didn't last long. Jeremy was being mean to the kids. Our kids here. Yeah. I'm like. I had a short fuse that day. That's for sure. Like I know why you're mad, but it's not their fault. It's their fault. Like you can be mad if you want to, but you can't be <laughs> mad at them. Go be mad at somebody else. Society. Liberian <laughs> society. Hmm. Society. It's hard. Well, and there's just nothing really for us to do. Like we've done better swimming. I got my yoga mat, so that's helped some. Yoga helped yesterday. Yeah. But like. It's hard to exercise on the days like you can barely get out of bed. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go make dinner and got a movie picked out for the kids. So Yes. I really appreciate those of you that sent me some Venmo, too. If, if you're like, I don't, if you're going to, if you need to buy gifts or you want to buy Noonday anyway and you've had stuff on your list, like, please buy now because it helps Noonday. It helps the Noonday mission of the fair trade environment for, like, developing countries all over the world. There's... I didn't mention Ecuador last time. Ecuador, Guatemala. Let's see if I can name them all. Ecuador, Guatemala, East Asia, Thailand, Nepal, Vietnam, Peru, Mexico, <clears throat> Uganda, Kenya. Three more. India. India. Mexico. I got Mexico. What's well, the one that was two words that was that, that worked with the trafficking? Did you mention East Asia? I heard you oh, said that okay. one. That's not. They won't tell us the specific country that they're in. Just in that area. Yeah. Two more. Um, Ethiopia. One more. I need the I need the website. <laughs> There's one more. I wish it was Liberia. I know. They could use it for sure. Oh, I think it's Afghanistan, but they don't have any. They don't have any of their products on. They have a partnership with Afghanistan, but they wow. they don't have any of their products on the site right now. That's cool. Yep. So that's their team. Um, and 33 different artisan businesses. So they are self-employed artisans. They set their own prices for a fair trade environment so they don't have to take their stuff to market. And they sell it um, to Noonday. And Noonday pays them up front. Um, that's part of being the B Corps Fair Trade certification. It's difficult to maintain um, in the business world, but they do it. And um, there's a lot of scholarships that go into some of the purchases. But um, like Aggie, she's in Uganda. She was one of their part of one of their first partnerships, and she is now independent. So like she can sell to Noonday, but she also just sells to the public like my Rachel shoes she designed me some shoes and I bought them from her my but my Rachel. Rachel shoes that are flip flops with a back strap on them they are designed with me in mind because I was like do you have a shoe she's like no but I'll make you one and now she has them on her site and they're selling they're all different colors they custom make them but she is was started as an artisan partner like she started actually as a scholarship as a student through there and she came up through their training program she learned about marketing business running and then she basically just climb the ranks and now she has her own business she has her own employees she travels the world um and she'll she she prays for our adoption man she's a strong christian woman and she's like she's one of those people that she prays a lot but she does a lot and that's one thing i i don't think that you know they talk about prayer and i think prayer is important but like you know if you need to dig a hole to plant a tree and you're like oh god please help me dig the hole please help me dig the hole and then there's a shovel next to you that your neighbor brings you and you still sit there and say, God, help me dig the hole. Help me dig the hole with a shovel sitting next to you. Like you're wrong. You have the shovel. Don't go dig the hole. Yeah. But if you're praying for God, dig the hole, dig the hole, dig the hole with the shovel sitting next to you and you don't dig the hole yourself and you're able to do that. Then that like God answered your prayer. He gave you your, you know, so that's one thing that I, I think about a lot when I think about Aggie of being a, a strong Christian woman that also acts doesn't just say, like, I'm going to pray for your adoption. She didn't say it to me, I'm going to pray for your adoption. She's like, I'm going to pray for your adoption. When you're in Africa, if you need to come to Uganda, call me. Like, I will take care of you. You may come here if you need to because you're going to be closer to me than you are home. And, like, you know, she got me those shoes. I don't even know if she made a profit on the first pair of shoes she sent me. But, like, now they're she's selling them. I mean, they're doing great. But to say, like, no, I'll make you the shoe that you want. Tell me what you want. So, like, not, dear God, please send me business. But, like... She prayed for God to send her business, and then through a, fr a mutual friend, Hope, she told me, oh, Rachel really wants these kind of shoes, and she was like, well, maybe we can make them. Let's call the team. Um, so, the, like, that's the kind of thing is act. Act for that business. Now, I, I don't know. If you want the debut backpack, Aggie's team made that. It's on It's on the spring launch right now. I kind of want it, but I'm not going to try not to impulsively buy noon day. That's just going to be waiting for me when I get home. Don't do it. You like noon day, though. Yes. I wish noon day could be in Liberia, too work on it yes what else you got not much not much it's gonna be okay uh, me, this is what i think about when i hear about end of the week we'll get an update it's like fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me 
Well, and it's one of those things that's just hard because nothing here, they say that nothing here happens fast and they're correct. It took me 48 hours to buy 12 pairs of shoes for 12 kids and I still didn't have it done in 48 hours. I had it 80% done in 48 hours and I'm a resourceful woman that doesn't even have to work here and I had a driver at my disposal mm -hmm. who's Liberian who knows where everything is and it took me 48 hours. So like, and that's just shoes. Yeah. That's just shoes. I really wish I would have brought some of our seven-year-old shoes that are too small. Just because, I don't know, just because. Just because. Just because now I gotta go hunt down shoes. The adventure. I did find like a um, sneaker store that had a door that you could go in and not buy it on the market, but like they had like, like Under Armour shoes that I could get on Amazon for $39.99 for $100. And I was like, no, thank she's you. like, I'm like, why are they so much? She's like, well, they're from America. Oh. I'm like, it's like two years ago model. I'm like thinking in my head, like, could I sell you my shoes that I'm wearing for $50 right now? Because <laughs> they're from America. But I didn't say that. I was like, oh, you're a little out of my budget for today. I remember like the last you. shoes I bought was the hookah knockoffs. And they're, they're $35. So hookah's like $200, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people at work wear them. I mean, they're good, and apparently. The well, yeah, but the knockoffs... <laughs> We see the knockoff. We see I the. I did not have foot pain like I normally That's do with good. New Balance or anything yeah. else. So, they did the trick, but they weren't. Jeremy $200. has very flat feet. He's very Fred Flintstone. That's right. Well, big old my. flat feet. Well, my. Who's well, my? She's my cartoon wife. Mm. All right, <laughs> day ninety three is over. All right, love you. Love you.